This is Coogan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. We're at Tony Sims' Matchroom Boxing Gym with me. I've got the one and only Dark Destroyer, Nigel Ben. Nigel G. Ben, shall I say. How are you? <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I'm fine, mate. I'm fine. I'm, yeah. Just enjoying just being able to be with my son. Um, just uh, going on the pads with Tony and all that. Just enjoying life, really, to tell you the truth. Looking at you on the pads there with Tony, you seem like you're rolling back the years. Uh, still still got something there, there, Nigel? No, I've always got something there. It's just I've done it all my life. It's just something I just train all the time. It's just, you know, nothing in It's just, just who I am. You know, I, I just love training. I just love it. I, you know, from the army discipline, just just love training. It's just, just who I am. We don't get to see as much of you as the British... Your, you know, the people that followed you for so many years would have liked to. Obviously, you've situated yourself out in Australia, but by the looks of it, you're very happy and content out there. I'm very happy and content. You know, it, when you've had a life that I've, like, I've lived and a career that I live, you know what it is to be out in Australia, living a good life, building a nice six-bedroom, six-bathroom house out there with a theatre room on two acres of land, just to relax out there with my wife and kids. I mean... A, best place I just can't wait to get back it's summer now <laughs> got to top up my town I love it out there to me it's the best country in the world I lived in Miami for three years LA two years 12 years in Mallorca but no comparison to Australia lovely it's the only country that I would I would promote it's that lovely out there just, just beautiful country when you come back home and or say home here to England do you miss and appreciate what you've sort of left behind in Australia or do you think to yourself do you miss what you went to Australia for to come back really that's really that's really an easy question mate I mean as much as I'm proud to be British mate but I take Australia all day long mate Aussie 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 oi 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 <laughs> yeah I love it out there mate beautiful I don't I don't actually miss nothing here you know what is one thing I've got to say though when, when we have the sun out, it's nothing nice to be up in like Marble Arch driving around looking in the Hyde Park. It's just lovely around here. The greenery, I do actually love the countryside. It's when you know when it when it's nice and sunny. It's lovely here, but it's like a toss of a coin. In Australia, it's not like that. You, you don't need to toss a coin. You can say, well, look, I'll tell you what. Let's have a barbie next week. Matter of fact, let's have it next month. Or the month after, and I guarantee you can get some sun. That's the difference, mate. People say, "Well, I'll take," oh, you know. And what I like about Australia, they say, "Well, look, you know what? Start work at six, finish at twelve. We'll have a barbie with a family." Really? And you know, if, what is, I, I don't know what the saying is. They don't. They, they don't. They work to live or live to work. Whatever the saying is, and you know that's it. It's not like uh, you've got to rush around. It's just. It's great, even though that I, I find, it, find the city kind of fast, but then on the outskirts of the city, it's lovely. Just put my feet up, and all you can hear is tweet, tweet, the birds tweet, tweet. That's what I hear, mate. Not cars rushing around and all that. It's lovely. That's a life, mate. That's a life. I can talk about Australia all day long, mate, so we better change the subject. <laughs> Um, I mean, move, moving on to boxing now. Obviously, you know when people talk to you, they like to sort of compare the the era. I mean, the era we were treated to, uh, you know, in your time, and compared to that of now, and the emergence of. I mean, let's just say it is your son. Uh, hopefully, you know, turning professional in the near future. Chris Eubank, son. 15, 15, 18 months. You know, it's not rushing my son. I mean, he's got it going on, mate. I mean, he's. Um, He's, um, I right look at both at us at 18, now he's just turned 19 two weeks ago. I mean, he just surpasses me by far. I mean, he would have given me, a, well, I think he would have beat me as an amateur, even though I was like just wild, but he's like, he's powerful. And um, yeah, he's got power. And I just feel like, you know, he's, he's mature for his age as well. And I, he knows what he wants. And I just believe that he's going to, he's going to get there. He's going to get, there. I just know it. I just know it. I know it, it, it's in the DNA. When I say about it, it's in the DNA, yeah. It's not me, even though he fights like me, he's not me, he's his own man. And that's what I love about him. He's great. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And he loves, you see, the difference is, I don't give my son nothing. I give him £50 a week. 
that he sends me saying, oh, Dad, look, I, I want to go, I want to go and uh, get some fish, can you send me some money? Or he might want to go to the cinema. I send him. I don't give him nothing else. He's got to work and he's willing to work. That's the thing. And I'm not going to crowd, he, I'm not going to crowd his life. You know what I mean? I just like, you know, let him do what he's got to do. But I will eventually invest his money. So at the end of the day, like when I retired, he's got something to say, well, you know what? Oh, my dad's investing my money in property. And I say, oh, son, look, you have a 10-year mortgage. By the time you become, you know, 32, 30, 33, you know, you're out of the game, boom, you've got 15, 20 properties. That's it, son. That's your pension. Do exactly what I've done. I mean, I was just going to say, when your son does eventually turn professional, you know, we'll be in a situation where, like I said, the sons of Chris Eubank and Steve Collins, who are already professional, added to that, Connor as well. I mean, it could be a quite a surreal uh, time for boxing, uh, seeing those three fighters. I mean, I know they're all fighting at different weights, but it will, uh, for the fathers involved and obviously for the, for people that fo followed you back in your era, it will be a surreal moment. It would be a surreal moment. You know, I think Chris Eubanks is, is, is I think... I think he's just got to find his feet. He's got to be who he is. He, you cannot emulate your dad. Your dad had his career and, and that was, he was simply the best. So I would say to him, don't jump over the ropes. Don't come out and simply be your own man. And I just think that he, his quality, I think until you can find out who he is, not living off his dad, I think it'd be great. Just like, you know, make your dad step aside. Step aside. Don't need. He don't need to be. In his, in his, I think sometimes he needs his, his son's limelight. It's not about him. It's not about him. He's always hugging, hugging the camera. It's not about him. We've had our day. Just stand aside. Let your son do it. I watched him at a press conference with a guy that he was fighting, getting in front. I said, "What was that all about?" He loved the limelight. Loved the light. Let his son. Let his son enjoy his career. Just step back. And I think if he steps back, I think we'll see a, a better Chris Eubanks Jr. I, I spoke to him. I just said, invest your money, don't waste your money, don't be silly, don't go and buy cars and all that, and waste your money. Be more productive with your money, be, be more busy, not once every five or six months. You know, do good. And I think, I honestly believe that he will become world champion. I know he's talking about fighting Triple G, just stay away from that at the moment. You're young, you've got a lot to learn. And I just feel that he, he could be a good fighter, as long as he don't try and follow in his dad's footsteps. Be your own man. I was going to come on to that. Obviously, you know, there was a, a story that came out from the last week or so that Chris Eubank Jr., you know, wants to fight Gennady Golovkin. It was considered now with Mayweather apparently retired as the pound for pound number one. Now, do you see anything wrong with Chris Eubank Jr. after the amount of fights he's had, the amount of experience he's had for wanting to fight the best in the way? Is there anything wrong in that? He's not even really learned his trade. Who is he really for? Come on, you know, who, who has he really fought? He fought like, you know, you can't look at uh, um, Billy Joe Saunders and Glock him in the same... Really? <laughs> I'm not being disrespectful to, to Billy Joe. If you can't beat Billy Joe, you think that you've got a chance with uh, um, Triple G? Hmm, no, come on, let's, let's, just, let's, let's look at it. If he's been voted the best best pound-for-pound -pound fight in the world... Hmm. And the guy that he just thought, oh, oh right, so now he, I, I just backed this guy. I don't know who he was anyway. I didn't even read it in the papers. That's how sad it is. I thought, oh, well, let me find out about, I picked up the sun. I thought, let me find out and see how um, Chris Jr.'s done. I didn't see nothing. What does that say? What does that say? If he's not in the papers, I looked in it and when he got the mirror, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. It might have been in there on Sunday, but it wasn't in there on Monday. Usually, I remember when we fight, bang, there yeah, Monday, bang, there yeah, Tuesday. So I didn't really see, see much of it. So I just feel that he's still got a lot to learn. A lot to learn. And now that he's got a new trainer, I think with Adam Booth, I think it's going to really work out well for him. Do you believe ultimately that um, Chris Eubanks Senior, or English as he's now known, his influence on his son will have uh, an overall positive or negative effect on his career? How do you see that going? I think really, I think he's trying to making some be like him and I don't think it's going to be positive I think Chris Eubanks Jr. could be very positive have good people around him speak to people uh, and not try and emulate his dad I just think he's just got to be his own man I don't think it's going to be positive I just think it's just going to be negative and I think Chris Eubanks Jr. can go all the way but, but, and it, but be positive I think with this negativeness is just that's a bad vibe around 
certain things that he's doing, I don't think that he needs to do. I think that he just needs to just step off and let his son enjoy his career. What with Adam Booth, that's it. I just feel like, you know, that, you know, I saw the, the camera, people were telling me the camera was focused more, more on him than his son. What's wrong? I mean, listening to you talk, when your son eventually does turn professional, it seems like you will take almost the opposite uh, stance to what uh, Senior has taken with Junior in Eubanks. I'm not doing nothing. The only thing that I'm going to do, me and his mum, the same way that how now I've been retired since November the 9th, 96. My wife took all my money off of me. She invested it all in property. And I'm sitting good because of that. And like I said to everybody else, we, we built a nice six bedroom, six bathroom, theatre room on two acres of land in, Aust in Sydney, Australia. That's it. So the same thing we'll do, we'll say, yeah, son, give me your money, don't worry about your cars and all that, mate. We invest your money in property, so when you get to 30, 32, mate, you've got a nice foundation with property, that's your pension, son. And he say, yeah, thank you, dad. Then that's it. I don't want, I don't want to be in it. Or, I don't want that. I just want to sit back and just like watch his career take off, develop. I might just watch it from over, overseas. Well done, son. You fought good today, mate. Yeah, mum and we were just praying for you, son. Well done, mate. That's it. Keep your feet and we continue to pray for him. I don't want to be in his face. I don't even want to. He knows that at all. When you hear him talk, man, he's articulate. He's, he's at 19. He knows what he wants. I ain't going to try and take any limelight from him. Go on, son. You speak. You don't need me, mate. Go on, mate. Talk. I said, we're just really respectful to people. That's about it. And he does that. I ain't got to tell him. He knows at the end of the day, when he starts getting caught, I say, no, that's, that's not who you are, son. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't put anybody down. Like, he was doing an interview. He's talking about, like, I was asking him, like, what if I fought Chris Eubanks and all that? And he, he said something, yeah, well, I, I, but I weren't being cocky. He said, well, I know I want to win. Ten minutes later, he said, can you remove that? Because I, I didn't really want to say that because I, I don't want to put Chris, you know, do you understand? I thought, wow, quality, son. That's quality. That's quality. So he's not, he's not like that. He's not trying to jump before the gun. You know what I mean? And I think that's great. That's my son. That's not me telling him. That's him saying that. That's it. Just finally, uh, before we go, I just want to uh, touch on, obviously, we're at the matchroom gym here where Anthony Joshua trains. I know you've uh, been an admirer of Anthony Joshua for, for some time. And, uh, you know, what, what have we got here, Nigel? Well, one of first, because I've always been fascinated with Anthony Joshua, right? Because everyone was telling me about this guy, that Anthony Joshua, the big old unit. I thought to myself, well, I just wanted to see him because I was all going raving mad about him. So I thought, well, I just want to see him. And we come in the gym. I saw this guy. I, was like, I looked at him. I thought, wow, well, look at the size of him. That's a proper unit. And then... But the difference is what I like, he's articulate, he's a good looking lad. Uh, 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 I just thought that he's just a quality guy. And just seeing the size of him and then hearing that he could do 100 metres in 11 seconds, really? Being six foot five and built like a toilet. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and not only that, he, he saw me on the pad, he said, boy, i got to step my game up. So I thought, oh, thank you a lot, Andy. You know what I mean? But I, 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 I think he's... He's gonna be. I think he's gonna be it. I really do. But I just want to see him get a clump. Not that I want to see him get a clump. We all want to see what people like getting a clump. We want to see him get up there, and pull his socks up. Say, yeah, come on, I'll have it with you. I think he's. I think he's a real deal. I only see him for, fight once. I've only seen him because we're in Australia. Like I said, it's not really big boxing. But I just really like to see him go, and then hopefully, God willing, eventually fight Tyson Fury. Because I just feel like you know, I'm just looking at him. He's a. He's a specimen. He's a unit. I like it. I like it. We know Tyson Fury's obviously got his uh, world title challenge against uh, Vladimir Klitschko next month in Dusseldorf. Uh, your views on that fight quickly, Nigel? I really don't know, you know, because I don't know what... Um, and it's actually bigger than uh, uh, um, Klitschko. It's just, I think, an inch taller or something, or two inch taller. I think he's six foot seven, he's six foot nine or something like that. Around about them figures, I think, yeah. They're both big old lumps, but... Um, I want to know what's, what's Tyson like when he gets hit because he talks a good fight. I mean, and, and, and the confidence that he has. I mean, he's only 25 or something like that, 26, I don't know. So we really don't know. What's it like when he gets one on the chops? Will he get up? Because, you know, he, he's... And he could win it by just 
jabbing and moving. He could just win it. He could just nick it. But it's going to be hard in Germany, mate. You know, it's going to be hard. But I think tides are kind of changing in, in, in Germany where, you know, like in Italy, we had to knock him out to get a draw. So I, I don't know. Even, it's 50-50 to me until if um, Vladimir or whatever um, uh, let's go punch on the chin. Then we find out. Because I always like to see what are people like when they get here? Are they going to be one of the darkness chores, get up the floor and say, come on, let's have it? Then we'll know. All right, well, listen, Mr. Ben, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. You can call me Nigel if you want. No, Mr. Ben's fine. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Nigel G, Ben. Uh, thanks for talking to us. And listen, whenever you are heading off back to Australia, uh, safe trip home. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless. Thank you very much.